In every uh, research proposal or in uh, research papers, there is a subheading on ethical considerations. That means this uh, ethical review is highly important in all research, especially that involving the human research. And every researcher should know the ethical issues and also how to protect the welfare and the safety of the research participants. So in this class spanning for 10 to 15 minutes, I'll uh, describe the ethical framework for health research. Ethical review is needed for all types of health research. Don't think that this ethical review is needed in uh, studies which collect some samples from the participant. It is not like that. Even if there is no risk at all to the participant, you are giving a questionnaire uh, or even if you are going for a retrospective uh, record analysis, yeah, in that case also we need an ethical review. And there are international standards uh, for ethics uh, review and also in India, the Indian standards are developed by Indian Council of Medical Research that is ICMR. So various guidance documents has evolved starting from the Nuremberg Code. This was the first of that kind which uh, evolved in 1947 and this actually the initiated the uh, analysis and uh, documentation on research risk benefit analysis and also voluntary consenting. So everything uh, initiated with the Nuremberg Code and then came the Helsinki Declaration and this one, Belmont Report is also important step which mainly describes autonomy, justice and beneficence and also the informed consent and the importance of uh, a review on ethics committee, ethics committee review. So autonomy, justice, beneficence, the informed consent and ethics committee review was uh, uh, initiated or stressed by this Belmont report that you have to remember. Important step on pharmacovigilance was taken by this uh, CAOMS that is Council for International Organizations on Medical Sciences and WHO. Council on International Organizations for Medical Sciences and WHO um, mainly documented on pharmacovigilance that is mainly the uh, drug reactions, adverse drug reactions, uh, clinical trials on drugs etc. And International Council on Harmonization that is ICH mainly documented the good clinical practice. So especially you have to remember this Nuremberg Code and Belmont Report on Autonomy, Justice, Beneficence, Informed Consent and Ethics Committee Review. In India, we have an ICMR and ICMR is given the standards and practices to be followed on all fields including the stem cell research, genetic research, reproductive research, everything. So if you are doing a research in India, you have to go and look at the website on ICMR for all the minimum details and standards and the um, reports you have to follow on research. Here you can see the um, words like autonomy, justice, beneficence and one more is there that is uh, non-manifestance. So what are they? They are the basic ethical principles in a researcher should follow. So one is what is this autonomy? Autonomy is actually a Latin word which means self-rule, okay, that is self-rule. Every researcher has got an obligation to respect the decision taken by an adult participant. So that is respecting the uh, self-dignity of uh, participant and that is called autonomy. The autonomy simply means we should respect the dignity of the uh, adult participant and we should not make them force them to uh, include in the or to take part in the uh, study. What about justice? And for example, if you are not allowing certain ethnic group to be included in a particular study and that becomes an act against justice. And this beneficence, what is this? And correct in all our action. Okay, so that uh, no harm or we should positively take every steps to prevent harm to the participant. And uh, one more thing coming is uh, non-maleficence. And uh, this is do no harm. Okay, non-maleficence. In every study, we should make every effort to do no harm.
to the participant. And in any case, if we anticipate any harm, the risk should be minimized to the maximum. Otherwise, there is no use in simply wasting the resources for doing harm to the participant. So, all this, one, autonomy, second, justice, beneficence and non-maleficence. You should know the meaning of everything. Each one of these and also these are the four basic principles a researcher should follow in ethics. Another important thing that comes under ethics review is informed consent. It's very important. And this informed consent is usually written in the local language. In informed consent, we are explaining to the uh, proposed participant about the study procedures in a systematic manner so that they can take a learned decision to participate or not to participate in the study. So we have to tell the title and the setting of where we are going to conduct the study and uh, what is the duration of the study, what are the possible risks and possible benefits to the participant. All should be explained in a systematic manner and uh, the participant should have a chance to get their questions and concerns answered during this in, in this informed consent and at the end they can take a learned decision um, about to uh, participate or not to participate okay so this informed consent is very important and it has got a structure the stakeholders uh, involved in informed consent are one the most important one are the researchers and the associated institution so they have to prepare the informed consent and make the uh, participant aware of that and get it signed. So one is the researcher and the concerned institution and the second is the participant. Participant should give a very uh, a learned uh, consent without any force from any other uh, side either from the uh, researcher or from any other agencies and also the sponsors then the regulators and monitors are also responsible. They are also the stakeholders in consenting process. And uh, the sponsors, regulators should supervise the efficiency of the informed consent and they should regularly do a monitoring of the process also. And this is how you have to uh, write an informed consent. At the top, uh, you, you have to write the name of the project along with the agency at the top. And there should be a body and in the, at last there should be signature. Signature of the participant, signature of the researcher, principal investigator and also signature of the witness. So three signatures, signature of the participant, signature of the researcher and signature of the witness. And this witness should not be a part of the research process. Okay, should not be, witness should not be in any way connected with the research work. Okay, so and in the body, these are the findings. First is a research description or a short description of what you are going to do, and then the risk and also the benefit. And alternatives that is, for an example, if I am going to do a um, stepidectomy for the patient, that is, an operation uh, for uh, conductive hearing loss uh, caused by autosclerosis, if I am going to do that surgery. One alternative I have is a hearing aid, fitting of hearing aid. So the participant should be told about if they, if there is any alternative that can be tried. Okay. Then the confidentiality that has to be maintained. And then for compensation. This compensation is for lost wages if he is working in any other area. And because of this uh, his patient, uh, participant coming to the study, if he is lost his work, that wages can be compensated. And also the travelling elements can be given, but any uh, money cannot be given to the participant for participating in the study. So that is against the ethics. Okay. So, and then the contact person. In case if there is any adverse reactions or any problem, to whom to be contacted, that should be clearly mentioned in informed consent. And this participation should be voluntary and without any force from any external agency. All these should be included in the body. Okay, 
This is how you have to write an informed consent. Things uh, you have to remember while making the informed consent is that this informed consent is beneficial to the researcher as well as to the participant. If there is any medical legal issues come, if there is a clearly explained uh, informed consent, that will be favorable for the researcher. Okay. The second thing, this informed consent should be written in a local language with the simple form and clarity should be maintained. And if you are using any uh, templates in other languages that should be translated and back translated as I have already told in earlier classes translation from English to the local language and also confirm it by doing a back translation uh, done by a uh, different person that is also important that so the clarity understandability and simplicity of the informed consent is very important and this should be uh, taken from the participant without any force from either, either from the researcher or from um, any external agencies. That is also important. This should be an impartial person, not at all related to the research work. And other than this written uh, consent, any pictorial consent form can also be taken. And if you are taking from a group, that is uh, especially in cases of tribal population, a group consent can be taken or the consent can be given by the leader of that particular group. If you are taking uh, from uh, adults in that is around 12 to 15 uh, age group, up to 15 age group, the consent from the parent or from legally um, permissible personnel is enough and consent in that case consent is not needed from participant and also usually we take an assent from the participant if the age is below 50 uh, years of age. Okay. So that is all regarding this ethics review. Uh, I told you that, I already told you in earlier classes that there are three types of reviews. One is an ethics review, another one is scientific review and third is a regulatory review. So what will you do in a scientific review? So the scientific review usually look for the novelty, novelty of the study, the rationality and the relevance of the study, usually con conducted by an institutional uh, review board is looking into this. They will uh, go through the uh, background, then relevance of the study, then objectives, is the study sample correctly designed, is the methodology correct and it is in par or in correlation with the uh, primary objectives and the title and is the study feasible and uh, is the inclusion and exclusion criteria correct is the sample size adequate then the study population study setting all that and also the uh, data collection methods then analysis part the plan of analysis this uh, scientific review is related to all such things okay and the third type is a regulatory review Regulatory review is done by special bodies like that, uh, in India we have a drug controller general of India or there is an health ministry screening committee. So they will do the regulatory review and main objectives are uh, funding, budget allocation by foreign funding. Then uh, if there is any uh, transfer of shipment of any genetic products, blood samples like that, transfers, exchange of scientists, visitors and that is intellectual property uh, exchanging and also research done in high security area. If you are going to do a research in India Park border or India China border, you will be under thorough monitoring of this uh, regulatory review, review committee. So they will look into the um, um, uh, study prior to and also all through the study they will be, you will be under monitoring of the regulatory review board and uh, and they, they have also got the power to tell you to modify some aspects if needed or uh, termination of the research study is also can be done by this regulatory review if they uh, um, feel that you are not sticking on to the uh, protocol or the guidelines uh, told by the regulatory review board. Okay, if you are uh, clearly stick on to the uh, ethical um, issues, if you are not violating the ethical issue, then it will be easy for you to get regulatory sanction from a uh, review sanction from this regulatory review board and also the scientific review board. So this is in short 
the main uh, points regarding the ethical concerns in health research. There are so many challenges to the uh, researcher in terms of ethics, but it is always better to use stick on to the uh, guidelines uh, by the ethics review board, the scientific review board and also the regulatory review board so that your um, project or the study will be easy to conduct and also you can address the potential risk and also the uh, can do the study without doing any harm to the participant. Thank you.